Okay, I can't talk about all this without giving examples. And I thought, well, I gotta just put myself right up there because these are lessons that I learned. So that's my dorky faculty picture back when I was teaching that I dug out that was on a web page for how long, you know? And now here I am using it in presentations. So I don't know, but hey, you can't, you can't say your thing if you don't use yourself as an example, right? So I started teaching and of course, I was always lectured to, right? So what do I do? I go out there and I start lecturing, you know? So that's really, you know, a one-way situation. I'm delivering information to my learners, and depending on how big the class is, what type of information, there may not be even a two-way conversation taking place. Well, then you learn a little bit and you realize, wow, this really should be a two-way conversation if I want them to be building knowledge and really going up the taxonomy. And there's also value in them talking with one another and me not even being involved in the correspondence, but them actually working together to make sure that they understand and that they're actually mastering the material. Well, then you get into pedagogy and andragogy and what that really means. And the fact that in that classroom, you have people that are quite capable and then you have people who may even be in a situation where they need remediation before they can go where you need to take them. How do you meet the needs of all of those learners and make sure they all leave with what they need? The only way to really do that is to introduce andragogy into your instructional model. So you take this online and you have an environment now that allows you to take your overviews and your summaries, your key terms, your lectures, your examples, any type of practice exercises or practice um, exams even, quizzes, assignments, and you build those in an environment that allows them to control how they learn the lower level material, the memorization, the comprehension material, the things that they need to be able to press replay on until they get it, or that they need to see in a visual manner. So you have this over here that's um, maybe just straight text, and you have some people, man, you just give me that material, some highlighters, and I'm just gonna be all over it, and that's how I'm gonna put that in there. You have other people who, man, I really wanna see a visual. I need you to take that and make it visual for me and help me to understand that. You take all that, and you build an environment that gives them control over how they interact with these components. And then once you've done that, and they feel like they can master that material the way they need to, according to their learning style, according to their cognitive style, according to their level of dependence or independence as a learner, and now you've empowered them to be able to do what they need to do, but you haven't really given up control. And see, control is a huge issue with this. As faculty, we want to make sure that we have a certain amount of control because that's how we control the quality of the experience, right? But I'm in control because I developed every one of these pieces. I have put every single bit of this information together or worked with a team to do it, maybe in my Center for Scholarship and Teaching and Learning or our Instructional Technology Group. So behind each one of these items, they're tapping into me as a SME. They're tapping into me as an educator. They're simply able to do it from the learner perspective based on who they are and what they need. And once I give each one of them the, that opportunity, then I'm in a position where now, in our class discussions, our group projects, and our presentations, we've gone to an entirely new level because everyone was able to master what they needed to contribute effectively to the higher level things in the course. This is one of those things that it seems really basic, but it's extremely powerful, and it's not giving control to the learner in the negative sense, but in the positive sense. Because what you're doing is saying, I'm gonna give you my expertise, packaged this way with these options, so that you can tap into it as often as you need to, in the way that you need to, in private, that's another thing. We don't talk about the fact that the people who are on the remediation end of the spectrum, they really don't want everybody in the class knowing that. If all they do in an online course is go to discussion boards and, you know, 
we're basically putting them in a situation where they can't even interact with the material the way they might need to in order to get past their deficiencies. So if we do this, we generally can raise the overall quality of the learning experience and the interaction for everyone goes to a different level because now they've got 24-7 access to this online. They can't have access to me 24-7. That's not humanly possible. Not to mention the fact that when we first started with the video and I was asked to repeat what I just said or start over and I was able to say that verbatim, the reason I made a point to comment on that is because if I'm lecturing in class or even, yeah, if I'm lecturing in class and I'm sitting there and we get on a roll and we're having an awesome conversation and we're doing wonderful things and, we're, and I have someone in the back raise their hand and say, can you repeat that? Oh my God, no, I cannot repeat that. Why? Because I was, I was just going with the flow of the conversation and without fail, when I try to go back and repeat that verbatim, that student ends up frustrated because they feel like they lost something if I can't say it verbatim. But you allow me to put my lectures online, whether it's a PowerPoint with voiceovers, whether you use videos, however you do it, and allow that learner to, to press play, repeat, rewind as often as they need to. You've now given them the power at the end of their fingers to watch it until they get it, to interact with the activities, to go to the examples, to say, you know what, maybe some people only needed one example, I need three. And now you've got a library of experiences that are growing as you continue to teach the course. It honestly, from the faculty perspective, takes that faculty member out of the trenches and really puts a spotlight on who they are as a subject matter expert and allows them to do phenomenal things and give the power to the learner in the ways that they need it so that everybody benefits from.